What? No trial? No public inquisition? You just shot the lady down by sheer fact that you have the power to do so? Yeah, that's the country you live in today under the federal Trudeau liberals. Headline on a CBC News Politics. Lynn Bayek suspended from Senate after refusing to take down letters condemned as racist. Unapologetic Sanders says she's being punished for exercising free speech. It's being reported by John Paul Tasker, May 9, 2019. Lynn Bayek has been suspended from the Senate for the remainder of the parliamentary session after declining to remove letters from her website that have been widely condemned as racist and for refusing to apologize for posting them. In a 15-minute speech to the Red Chamber Thursday, Bayek said she believes she is being unfairly punished by her Senate colleagues for practicing free speech, the tyranny of the majority. Bayek dismissed criticisms of the letter as political correctness gone awry. She equated her punishment, a temporary suspension, to the totalitarian nightmare described by George Orwell in his dystopian novel, 1984. This type of penalty is totalitarian and alien to the tradition of free nations like Canada, Bayek said. Parliamentarians have not had their freedom of expression threatened like this since the events that led to the enactment of the Bill of Rights by the English Parliament on December 16, 1689. For the duration of her suspension, Bayek will not receive her salary or have access to Senate staff and resources. The Senate plans to remove the offending letters from her official website. Really? They're going to go to her own official website and remove that preemptively? Yeah, that sounds pretty authoritarian as well. Last month, the Senate Ethics Committee recommended that Bayek be suspended from the upper house for the remainder of the parliamentary session after the Ontario Senator refused to take down the offending letters. That is her biggest crime that she's actually being accused of right now. It's not even what she said, it's that she's not respecting their authority and that's the thing you will understand today. That is a representation of totalitarianism and authoritarianism is, is secondary in nature is the particular crime that you've committed. In this case, you know, speaking freely, using her freedom of speech, her inalienable and God-given right to have freedom of speech, but she's going to be punished for daring to practice that freedom of speech. That's what's happened today, and I've seen that happen not just to people like myself, and not just in regards to speech, but in many areas where really what it comes down to today is how dare you challenge your political authorities and not conform to what they tell you you should do. The minute you challenge their authority, that's the minute you'll recognize that you are now in their crosshairs. That's why I have to laugh all the time when I hear people say, oh no, this is still a free country, and then you get to talk to them for a little while, it's all you find is like, oh, so basically you've abided by every rule, every law, every regulation that they've ever conjured or constructed, and you say, well, I'm, I'm following all the orders and the edicts that they've ever presented towards me, so of course this country is free, but wait a minute, you're just abiding by and conforming to the orders of your political masters. So no, you're not free. You're enslaved. But you have Stockholm Syndrome. And it shocks you to see people out there that don't have that same Stockholm Syndrome or yearning to conform or to comply to authoritarians. People that are willing to step outside the box of authoritarianism and challenge their authority. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are the people, people like myself, they're always pointed out and accused of being extreme or outrageous. In reality, it's you conformists that are extreme and outrageous because you're the ones that are contributing to the enslavement of millions of people, both socially and economically. Bayek has said she believes the letters, some which describe indigenous people as lazy, opportunistic, pampered, and inept, are not racist, but rather edgy and opinionated. She said they are part of a larger discussion she is trying to foster in Canada about the positive experiences of residential school students. Today, Bayek insisted in her speech that far from bringing the chamber into disrepute with her actions, she actually had improved the Senate's standings in eyes of Canadians by sparking a debate over the legacy of residential schools. Telling the truth is sometimes controversial, but never racist. The Senate's reputation has been enriched by my stand, as clearly stated in thousands of letters from Canadians that I submitted to the Senate ethics officer, she said. Many of the letters spoke of the pride and respect for the Senate and for me because of the dignity, honor, integrity I bring to the Senate, to my honesty and consistency. 
Assembly of First Nations National Chief Perry Bellegarde praised the Senate's decision to sanction Bayek. There's no room for racism or discrimination anywhere in Canada, especially at decision-making tables, he tweeted. Liberal Saskatchewan Senator Lillian Dyke, the chair of the Aboriginal People's Committee, today tabled a Senate report on the history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and the horrors of the Indian residential school system. She said she was not surprised by the speech Bayek gave Thursday to defend her actions and the letters given her track record over the last two years on these issues. It's kind of a relief, actually. There are two of us Indigenous centers that sit right across from her in the chamber, and it was a little disturbing to every day have to face her, look at her, and think the kind of things that she posted on her website were, in my mind, terrible, and she couldn't see that, Dyke said. So once again, think about who the people are that are trying to silence dissenting voices or those that actually want to speak freely. Like... Once again, folks, I, I just can't repeat this enough. At some point in time, you're going to have to come to terms with who are the true authoritarians. Now, the authoritarians love to play the playbook that they're victims. That's, that is actually, I won't use this as a universalized statement because, once again, there are outliers, there are exceptions to the rule. But a pretty good rule of thumb these days, if they're coming at it from playing themselves off as the victim or playing that victim card, and they want to use government as a means to overcome their victim status, well, that means that they just want to use force. Because government, once again, I can't believe I have to explain this to people. In 2019, we live in the age of information, but government is a representation of monopoly of force or violence. So these people are seeking to, they're saying that people are saying things. So this, uh, this lady is saying things that they don't like, but rather than just say things back to her to counter what she has to say, they want to use a representation of monopoly of force of violence. They want to threaten this woman with that monopoly of force of violence to silence and suppress her voice. So who's truly being authoritarian? She might be saying something that you might not deem as politically correct or you might not agree with, but what's the reaction? What's the consequence for her just using words? Well, these people are stepping up, not just using words, but using a means to cause her economic or social harms. Real world social and economic harms. Not just the pretense of using speech, but actual harm to her bottom line and her position and her reputation. Once again, Canadians better start to recognize and realize who the true authoritarians are these days. And once again, those authoritarians, they're going to be constantly coming at you because they come from that left side of the political spectrum. So they're always going to be trying to cater to your emotion, to your heart, to your empathy. And like I say, those kind of emotional manipulators, well, not only the authoritarian nature, but they like to use psychological warfare to keep you conformed and compliant and go along with the rhetoric. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.